here today uh, to talk about some allegations that have made against that have been made against me that are untrue by somebody named Nicole Egger. The reason I'm doing Facebook Live is because nobody can edit me. Nobody can change what I said. These are my words. And what I'm telling you is the truth. So I'm going to knock down all these false claims against me. My reputation is being damaged. My family is being put through this. And I'm done. I'm done. So I'm going to walk you through this methodically and hopefully succinctly. And please be patient. Because what I'm being accused of is horrible. I'm being accused of inappropriately touching her, Nicole Egger, when she was a minor, and having sex with her when she was a minor. That's what I'm being accused of. And I've had it. In 2007, and if I'm looking down, folks, I have papers here to prove all of this, okay? In 2007, Nicole Egger did two episodes of my reality show called Scott Bayer Was 45 and Single. She did two episodes. She's been in our home. My wife and I. In our home. She was my wife's friend. And, and uh, <clears throat> accusing me, in 2017, she started rumors. 2012. I'm sorry, in 2012, she started... Um, I'm reading this as I go. 2012, she started rumors that I had sex with her when she was a minor. All right? So, 17 is illegal, and I'm going to disprove that that happened. So, during 2012 and 2013, she was promoting three reality shows. And all of a sudden, these claims came up again about me doing inappropriate things with her. And again, I kept my mouth shut. Because usually when false claims in the past have been made against me, they just go away. But for some reason, she will not let this one go away. So, I did not respond. Then in November of 2017, a couple of months ago, Nicole Eggert and Alexander Polinsky decided to team up on Twitter and come after me. Alexander was saying some horrible things that I did or alleged and Nicole was beating the same drum. So my legal team wrote both of them formal letters telling them both and their representatives, if you have a claim, go to the police. There's a special unit there that handles this kind of stuff. Here is the letter to Alexander. Here is the letter to Nicole Egger. Alexander and Nicole. Please give the dates. The dates are December 7th, 2017. And these will also be posted on your and social these will media. will all be posted on my social media. Thank in their you, entirety. In, in their, their entirety. In their entirety. Thank you, sweetheart. Now, we told them to go to the police. They chose not to. They chose to go to social media with these claims. If you have a real claim... You go to the real people, not social media, where people like me get beat up. And just so you know, I'm going to talk about Alexander for a moment. He said things happened on the set of Charles in Charge, which ended at the end of 1990. He said there were things that I saw or was aware of or whatever he's claiming. Just so you know how it works on the set of a situation comedy. Especially with children. Okay? When you have minors on the set of a situation comedy, when they're not on the set working, they are in the classroom with the teacher. The teacher brings them to the set. And on the set is their parents and their teachers. My dad was there. Crew guys were there. Writers were there. So, what he's talking about, I have no idea. So, that's him. Now, she's making all these claims about me, Nicole Eggert is, that are false. And I'll be posting these again, like I said, 
online. She did an interview, Yahoo.com in 2012. Okay? I'm going to read this to you. Hold it up while you read it so people can see that you're not editing it. The interviewer sa says, so this means your ex, I don't know why you call me an ex, Scott Bayer was not a psycho ex. Nicole responds, no, he's not. Maybe you could guest star on his Nick at Night show called See Dad Run, which ended in 2014 that I shot at Paramount Studios. Maybe you could get a guest star on his Nick at Night show. Totally, says Nicole. I would love to work with him. There are a lot of weird, strange rumors about things that went on between us, but we became really good friends and everything is way more innocent than it was made out to be. We definitely had a fun time and he definitely was a big part of my growing up. And I think the other two kids from the show would say the same thing. I would love to work with him again and I'm friends with his wife. And yeah, totally, it would be so much fun. This is her claiming that I've touched her inappropriately, and this is how she reacts to me. That I'm a great guy, and she would love to work with me again. Okay. So, we think it all goes away, and then my agent calls me a little while back. January 16th. Says, uh, January, uh, January, thank you, January 16th, and says, go on to your emails. So I read my emails, and I have a letter, uh, an email here from the producer of Dr. Oz TV show. I am the producer of the Dr. Oz show. We are producing a feature, uh, a show featuring Nicole Leggert in connection with her allegations of sexual impropriety against Scott Bayer when she was underage. Okay, same, the same claims, same claims. Touched it appropriately. Sex underage. The same stuff. So. <clears throat> My legal team sends the Dr. Oz and Harpo and Harpo Productions a letter saying that these are all false claims. Again, these will all be posted and online. Yes. So we send that letter. They write a letter back. No, they email back. They, they, they email a letter email. They send an email back to me saying we need more information. Why don't you read some of the questions, how disgusting it okay. was, what they were asking. These are the questions they were asking me. No, whenever it goes back. It's okay. It should be number three right here, I believe it was. Right here. Some of the questions that right after, here. After we disproved, were, after we said to them, stop it, they're not true, they came back to me with these questions. Mr. Bayo acknowledges that he and Ms. Eggert engaged in sexual intercourse, but disputes her claim that she was under 18 at the time. Does Mr. Bayo recall where and where the first sexual encounter took place? How many sexual encounters did Mr. Bayo have? In the Nick Ritchie interview, which we'll be getting to in a little bit, she says Mr. and Mrs. Bayo messed around and went to third base. How does Mr. Bayo respond to that? And on and on and on. Okay. So, so your fourth one, you know, the fourth letter you gave the evidence. I gave them. I gave hard Harpo evidence and the Dr. Oz show hard evidence of these claims. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna play this for you. I'm gonna play you something. Tell them what it's from. I'm gonna play you something. It's from, it's from a show, uh, an online show called the Dirty dot com, which is a disgusting website, which Nicole Eggert decided to, decided to give an interview to. And we'll be this, po we'll be posting the link. However, it's not until like the fifteenth minute. Yeah, that you'll you, hear. You can, listen, you can listen to it here. So before I do that, before I do that, this this is somebody that I inappropriately in, inappropriately touched, and somebody that thinks I'm the greatest person would love to work with me again. Was at my home was on my show twice. I've seen over the years at different functions, hey, how you doing? It's good to see you. These are the claims that are being made against me. So. Play the, play the no, tape, hang on, please. No. no, play the tape first. Tape first, okay. I'll play the tape first. We love Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one too. Listen. No, George Clooney. No, 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 no. No actors, really. I mean, you hit them. You nailed all of them. The actors don't be actors. Like, boring. 
They do, but I don't know. For oh. me, like male actors are kind of feminine. Who was it? A famous person you lost your virginity to? Yeah, we've talked about him. What? <laughs> Let's not go back. Let's keep Hold going on, forward. Look at this list. This is crazy. We <laughs> talked about him. Okay. Um, why can't we name who he is? Is he alive? <laughs> oh my God! What if he was dead? That's so weird. Yes, he's alive, Nick. So wait, you lost your virginity to Hobie? No. Come on, I just told you that was recently. You lost your virginity to Charles? Scott Bale? Wow, that's amazing. Charles in charge. Totally mm -hmm. virginity. And there you have it, folks. Shocking. Now I, I feel bad. <laughs> now I feel bad now. Did, 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 did I break that story? Probably. Oh I mean, God. I think you probably broke it from, like, the horse's mouth. That's so crazy. That's such a that's such a perverted show, Charles in Charge, that I grew up No, to. because it was way after. We weren't even shooting anymore. Here's the honest truth. Way after? Because I had another boyfriend. You were 13 on the show? How old I know, I was show? 17. Yeah, but it was years later, okay? I was 17. I started dating this other guy, and I did not want to be a virgin. I was, like, embarrassed that I was a virgin. You need practice. So you're so like... So I needed somebody to, like, pop the cherry and, like, make things, so make me a, a so veteran. So a deal? Like, you told Scott, like, hey, bail. Like, hey, I'm, I had no one. Can you just come over real quick and knock this out? No one's done it. I just pretty much. Done. It was pretty much. And then it was like, do you want to go to dinner? And I was like, no, go. <laughs> go. So it was weird? <laughs> no, it wasn't weird. Did it hurt? Yeah. So First time isn't fun for a girl, at least. Like, oh, uh, no. It took a couple times. That's why I was like, because I wanted my boyfriend. I wanted to be, like, good for my boyfriend. So it was. Okay. So you heard it was way after Charles in Charge was done. She said it was, I think she said it was a couple of years after Charles in Charge was done, right? Here is her IMDb page. Her birthday is January 13th, 1972. See it? Got it? Okay. She said it was way after Charles in Charge was done. Here's a front cover of a script from Charles in Charge, dated May 18th, 1990. Okay? This is a show that aired in November of that year. So the production date was May 18th of 1990, and there were five more episodes after that show was filmed. So that makes her over 18. So that makes her 18 years and four months old. Now she says... We had sex after. way after the show was done. So what was she, 19? I don't know, 20? It's a very long time ago. These are her words. And I remember her calling me and asking to come over. And coming in my house one time and seducing me. Now, any normal heterosexual red-blooded American guy, the outcome would have been the same. Same thing would have happened. She seduced me, she came in the house and started kissing me. Those are her words, way after Charles in Charge was done. May of 1990, she was 18 years and four months old. Do the math, get a calculator if you need to. She's 18 years and four months old. Her words saying it was way after Charles in Charge was done. Could have been 1991. The show ended in November. The next year, she'd have been 19 years old. Now, after all this information got to Dr. Oz and Harpo, my legal team got a voicemail. And she left, she texted us saying, amazing news, I just got a voicemail from an attorney for Dr. Roz, and he said they are killing the show with Nicole. I know this attorney from the Gawker case, and he said the letter was persuasive, and they are not going to do it. Okay, so we're done, we think. Two days ago, or three days ago, I get a phone call from Harvey Levin. Who's Harvey Levin? Harvey Levin, TMZ, Harvey Levin. And he's asking me questions. And I said, Harvey, this has all been debunked. I said, I'm not going to tell you anything else. Goodbye. Hung up the phone. My legal team called him. And after talking to my legal team, TMZ decided not to run the show. But 
Nicole Egger continues to shop this story around with, with Lisa Bloom now and shopping it to social media, to television, to whomever will listen to it. And I don't, and I don't know why. I guess maybe she's looking for something. I don't know. Uh, but, but I don't know what other proof to put out there. She's my best friend in the world, and then all of a sudden I'm the boogeyman. So, and the problem with this, the problem with this is that it's a, no, I'm sorry. In almost all he said, she said cases, it's just he said, she said. Now go prove it or disprove it. Okay? No more he said, she said. And the real problem with this is that people with legitimate claims aren't taken seriously. And that's too bad. So I thank you for listening. And God bless you all.